In our previous video, we mounted all the components for the IO Link option on your PLC trainer. And today we're going to go through how to wire them to the IO Link module. So, one really interesting feature about IO Link sensors is they can be wired to standard PLC inputs or they can be wired to IO Link inputs. And also, a standard sensor can be wired to an IO Link master or a standard input. So we are going to do both. And this one, we're talking about how to wire it to our module. Now, we went through the freestanding option, or we have the linear actuator mounted option. I am going to use the linear actuator option for this, just because that gets it all nice and mounted, neatly forming. And after you mounted everything, you should have four cables left. You have two that have straight connectors on them, and you have two that have 90 degree connectors on them. And then you're going to have an Ethernet cable. And after that, we're just going to use some of the wires that come with your standard trainer. So first, let's go ahead and take one of our 90-degree connectors. And let's screw it to the encoder option. So I'm just going to screw it right in here. Now let's take the other 90-degree cable and let's screw it into our photoelectric sensor. And remember from the previous video, this is the IO Link sensor. And let's take our two straight connectors and screw them into the other sensors. And these are discrete sensors. And all of these sensors are going to land right here. Now let's go and do a quick refresher on how these work. If you notice, the terminal blocks that are on the standard trainer are a little bit different than the terminal blocks that we have here. So on our standard trainer, they're all even across here. And that means that they're all connected together. So this gives you four points to make wire connections to. And then all over here, we see we have the red jumper jumper and all these together. And that gives us 16 points for a plus 24 volt, 16 points for a minus 24 volt. Now, these look a little bit different. Notice they're stepped. And when you see them stepped like this, this means that only the ones on the same level are connected. So this one is connected to this one. This one is connected to this one. And this one is connected to this one. And this is a really common terminal block that you'll see on sensors because we can power our zero volt on the bottom one our plus volt on the middle one, and the top one usually is actually our input or output. And then in the previous video, we connected our red jumper on this top one and on this middle one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our standard trainer wires and we're gonna plug it into that back row. This is gonna be our minus, and then into the middle row and plug the back set of terminal blocks into the right set of DC power that's your minus, and the middle one into the left set. That's the DC plus. So that's going to give us plus and minus 24 volt over here. I'm going to go ahead and power up our IO link, and we're going to do that with this cable here. It's got a green wire and a one and a two. We're going to take one, our plus 24 volt, and two, our minus 24 volt. So I'm going to scoot this through here. Then we're going to plug into the ground terminal, and two will go into our minus, and one will go into our plus. And now we'll run this over to our IO link, and they are from the bottom, plus, minus, and our ground. So we're going to put one, two, and then ground. And finally, we have our Ethernet connection. So take the Ethernet cable that came with it. And for this exercise, it doesn't matter if you plug it into the bottom port or the top port. Now, in future videos, we are actually talking about DLR or device level rings. It's a type of redundancy. And then it will start to matter. But as of now, I'm just going to route this around through here. And then I'm going to plug it into port 5. And it doesn't matter as of today which one you plug it into, but when we start doing some advanced diagnostics, that will matter where that is plugged in. All right, now we are ready to wire our IO link. So I'm going to grab four blue wires out of our standard trainer wiring packet. 
And over here on our I.O. link, we're going to put a wire into C01, C02, C03, and C04. Those are the I.O. link input. Then from left to right, we're going to take number one, and we are going to put it into the top of the upper level. We're going to take number two. We're going to go put it in the second one on the upper level. We're going to take number three. We're going to put it on the third one of the upper level. Now we're going to take number four, and then we're going to put it on the fourth one of the upper level. Now we're not actually going to land any other wires on the IO like module because we're getting our plus 24 from right here. So this would simulate really your power wiring inside of the control panel, and the bottom part is where your field wiring would go. And we're going to start with the photoelectric one. That's the top one here. And if we look on it, it's going to have a brown wire, a black wire, a blue wire, and a white wire. And on our getting started wiring diagram, it shows that brown is our plus 24 volt and blue is the minus 24 volt or the zero volt. And the black wire is the IO link. We won't actually use the white one. So you can either cut it off or you can just tape it up just in case you decide to use it for something later. But with speaking of which, I want to be tidy with these yet at least because we're also going to be wiring over here and we can wire these to a drive. There's a lot of things you can do with these. So don't limit yourself by cutting them too short. We made them two meters just in case you decided to wire them even to some other piece of equipment. But so what we're going to do is we're going to take our blue wire and we're going to put it on this bottom level right here of the left terminal block. Now, these are push connects, but when they are just tinned, you can't push them. You want to use a release on these and don't put them too far in. So as you press that in, drop it down a little bit. And then the middle one is going to be the brown wire. So what that's going to do is that's going to power our sensor. And then the top one's what's going to the IO link. So we're going to put the black wire there. So we're going to look like this. Black, brown, blue. And then we want to repeat that for our inductive prox. It's going to go on our second terminal block. And the third one's going to be the capacitor prox. We're going to use the exact same color scheme. And finally, the fourth one is going to be the encoder on the front of the trainer and the exact same color code. Now we're ready to power it up. Now, one thing to be aware of is there is a cover over your IO link sensor when this ships to you. So you'll need to discard this cover. And then if you put your hand in front of it, you should see an indicator light and some numbers changing here. And your capacitor prox, if you stick your hand under it, you should see a light on the back of it. Now the inductive prox is looking for metal. So in the case of it, we want to take a piece of metal and put it in front of it, and we should see that lighting up. Now let's look at the web interface and see what we can learn in it. Now your default IP address is 192.168.1.15. Now for the videos, I actually have this one assigned to 20. Dot 195. Don't enter in this number. It's just so I can show you what you'll see in there. And then in the top right, we're going to see a login. And the default password is password. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, all lowercase. And it's going to ask you to change the password. And you want to click yes and go ahead and change it. All right, now we've got a little bit of diagnostics info that will lead us to what we need to do. But let's go ahead under local I.O., Let's click on the diagnostics. And inside of there, we see that we got a flag by channel one and channel two. And if you recall, we wired our standard sensors to channel one and channel two. Now this is configured right now for IO link. So let's just go through them all is if we go to parameters here and we go to channel zero, we have an operation mode. And here it's going to be IO link without validation. And that's what we want for that photoelectric that we put on channel zero. And then channel one, we have just a regular digital input. And then channel two, we have a regular digital input. And channel three, you have that encoder and it will be IO link without validation. So we're going to go ahead and write those. 
and that gets rid of our explanation points over here. And now, if we go and look at our actual data, let's in our local I.O., let's click Input, and let's go to Channel 0. And if you will stick your hand in front of the photoelectric, you're going to see some values changing right here. And if we go to Channel 1, remember, that's an inductive proxy. If you put some metal in front of it, then we see that it is working. If we go to Channel 2, and we put our hand in front of the capacitor box, then we see it's working. And on channel three, you, you probably already have some data there. And if we rotate our three-phase fan a little bit, then we're gonna see that that is actually working. So if you wanna stay down the route of IO link, then the next thing you wanna do is go configure your IO link in either your compact logics or your micro 820, micro 850 PLC or Siemens PLC, because this supports Ethernet IP, Profinet and Modbus TCP. Now, the other thing is we can actually wire this to our PLC. And so we're gonna talk about how we could take those wires and connect them over here. And this playlist right here will have both of those in it. See you over there.